So, the new M1 MacBook for developers. Is it worth it? Do developer tools even work? Well, we're going to find out and we're going to test four tools right after this. So if you want to hear the latest gaming news, tech news, reviews and comparisons, hit that subscribe button followed by the bell. So recently I've made a couple of videos about the new M1 MacBook Air that I have here and also the same chip what's inside the MacBook Pro 13 inch and also the Mac Mini that's just come out. Now I've told you guys lots of things about Chrome, Office and gaming, but what about you developers out there, you guys who create those masterpieces of apps and codes? What is the new M1 Mac like for them? And do the clients that are available, the tools to create your code and create your apps, do they actually work on an M1 Mac? Well, we're going to find out. But before we go and find out, I just wanted to tell you something, guys. This channel has just hit over 93,000 subscribers. What is absolutely amazing to hit 93,000. It's unbelievable. So because of this, I'm doing a bit of a giveaway. And that giveaway is for one of these. It is for an iPhone 12 Pro in Pacific Blue. And when we get over 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving this away. That's right, guys. You could possibly get your hands on this. And all I want to know from you is, are you a developer right now? Or maybe you're looking to becoming a developer and testing out different tools. I'd love to know. And write in the comments below what tools you know and what uh, code language you know as well. I'd love to know that. And when we get over 100,000 subscribers, I'll be announcing who the winner is for this iPhone 12 Pro. So make sure you have subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell. Right, well back to developers then guys and the tools. I've got four tools right here, what we're going to explore. So we're going to move on over now to the MacBook Air. I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer. And I've got four apps that I'm going to show you guys and see if they work. Now just before I do that, what I am going to tell you is I'm not going to be developing an app. I'm not going to be doing some testing in creating lots and lots of code because that will just take forever to do and this video will just last forever and as you can see from the bottom here this video doesn't last that long in that respect. So it's just literally checking out four popular or four common um, developer tools out there and see if they actually even open and work on the new M1 ARM64 architecture. Well, let's go and have a look. So then guys, just to show you then the first piece of software or the four softwares I want to show you today to see if they will work on this new M1 Mac is we've got Xcode, what is actually created by um, Mac themselves or Apple themselves. And this is the beta version, it's the latest version. Just want to see if it works. It should work because it's built by Apple and this is an Apple Mac. The next is Android Studio. So this is basically the opposite to rival to Xcode. So Xcode allows you to create um, apps and bits and pieces for Macs and also allows you to build them for iPhone, iPads and things like that. Whereas Android Studio allows you to build um, your apps and code basically for Android. So that is what the Android Studio is as well. So we're going to be testing that out. The next one we've got is Visual Studio Code. A lot of you guys wanted to check this out to see if this version would work, so I'm going to be checking that out. And then finally, of all, we've got IntelliJ IDE, IDEA CE. So I just want to check out this IDE. It's a very, very popular IDE right now. So this allows you to do everything inside. It allows you to do your code. You can see your code working and checking it out. It's a really powerful tool. So I'm going to also be checking out that this also works. But first things first, I just want to show you guys that this machine is a MacBook Air. It is the baseline one with eight gigabytes of uh, RAM inside it. It's only got 256 gigabytes storage, but that doesn't matter at this stage. And it is most importantly the Apple M1 chipset inside it. 
Now what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be keeping activity monitor open for you guys just to show you the apps and how much uh, memory and bits and pieces they're using at the moment. So right now you can see we're only using about 3.3 gigabytes, what's not a lot. And then for processor, we're at 95% idle, probably about 98% we were there before I started clicking around activity monitor. But you get the idea, we're hardly using any utilization of the actual processor. So we'll keep it on memory for now. So the first program or the first app I'm going to open up is Xcode and let's see if that works. So let's open this. And straight away, yeah, we thought this would work. This is the one I've got the most confident about. So we're gonna create a new Xcode project. And straight away, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a game. Let's do a bit of fun. And um, I'm gonna call this the test game, obviously. And um, we haven't got an organizer, but we're going to call him test. As we're going to call ourselves the testers. Just want to see the main interface, but I think everything will be right. We're going to use Swift, the main language. And yeah, lots of um, integration and bits and pieces. So I'm just going to click next. And um, what we'll do is we'll just save it in the documents at the moment. We're going to click create. And there we go. We're up and running. It says no author information has been supplied by the version control. There's an error on this one, please fix this. That's not so bad, that's just basically the author bits and pieces, but you can see here, Swift is fully working. We've got some test bits and pieces on the side. Uh, we've got some information and things that we can fiddle around with, with like the interfaces and main game view controller. I just want to quickly check back on that activity monitor to see how things are coping. So you can see here it's used up about half a gigabyte of everything, but it seems absolutely fine. The same with the processor CPU. We've dropped down by about another 10%. Oh, we've gone back up again. I think the processor was just running in the background there, but I am very, very happy with that. So for now, I'm just gonna close down Xcode. Like I said, guys, at the beginning of this video, it's just to show you guys that these apps work. Um, I'm not actually gonna be making some code up and testing some things. We'll be here for hours if I did that on all four, starting from scratch. So next of all is Android Studio. So this is basically the rival to Xcode, really, you could argue. So let's open this up. Um, it says it's been, so it's been downloaded from the internet or AirDrop where I beamed it from my other computer. I'm just gonna click open. So I've got another MacBook. Um, I'm just going to uh, just beam the programs over to this. I'm not going to put any settings. I'm just going to boot it up, Android Studio. It even says here, powered by the IntelliJ platform. So if this works, fingers crossed, that IntelliJ will work as well. We've also got a little disclaimer there. I'm not going to send my code off. And there we go. We've got the bits and pieces. We've got standard install type. Um, I'm going to have it as Dracula. I want the darker mode on here. And it's just going to do a little download there. I'm just going to let this run. And I'll fast forward it to the end for you guys. Okay then, straight away it says here, there is a problem, unable to install the Intel Haxon. Your CPU does not support VTX. So we knew this was possible going to be a problem because at the end of the day, this is a ARM 64 processor inside it, not an Intel processor. So it might not work. Let's just close this down and click finish. And so some bits and pieces might not work properly. So you guys, guys are going to have to explore that. But let's create a new project. Let's see how far we can get here. Let's just have a basic activity. And then I'll call it my application. Yeah, that's all fine. It's all going to be stored. And there we go, it's all loading up at the bottom. Fantastic, I think this is working. Yep, I think I'm really happy with that, it's just to see. I think, yeah, we can click around inside it. There we go, so we've got the debug and everything there. That seems all fine, everything's just loading in still. It's taking a minute or two to do that, it's just giving some information as well, but I'm quite confident everything seems fine, to be honest. Let's just have a look at the activity monitor again. And uh, yeah, the CPU it has, is actually using a bit of the CPU load at the moment, whether it's still trying to pull things in. I'm not too sure, I think it is. It says it's indexing and doing things at the bottom down here. So that might return back to idle in a minute, but it is downloading loads of information and bits and pieces. And then if I go to the memory 
piece here, if I move back over, you can see we're up to four or five um, gigabytes now at the eight. But like I said, we are pulling in bits and pieces into um, the actual app right now. Once this is all finished, really it should be okay. So I'm just gonna speed this onto the end once everything's downloaded, and then um, we'll do a bit more checking around again. Well, there we go, guys. You can see down the bottom, everything's being dragged in now. So that's gonna have another check of that memory and bits and pieces in the activity monitor. That's a bit more like it. We're using up about two gigabytes more RAM um, than we were expecting there. So it is a little bit heavy, I would say, the Android Studio. So you might possibly need 16 gigabytes of RAM in your machine um, if you're gonna be fiddling around with this and other bits and pieces as well. Remember, we haven't even got the test um, information, test code up at the moment. We're not even developing full on yet. And then same for processor as well. You can see now that's a bit better. We're about 90% idle, 91% idle, just by leaving it there um, idle. So that's absolutely fine. But the good news is though, from looking at everything, it all seems to be working absolutely fine. We can move around, no problems and everything. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with the Android Studio. So I'm just gonna close that down now and we're gonna move on to the next app. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna my exit. The next app we've got along is Visual Studio Code. So let's open up this one. And this is quite a popular app to use for you developers out there. At the same time while this is opening, let me know um, what kind of um, software and clients you use to develop in and what do you know, um, how, what languages do you know to develop in as well? I'd love to know in the comments below. But straight away that opened up really nicely and then um, I think we're ready to go almost straight away actually. So we can start a new file. Look at that. <laughs> Everything's working straight away with good old hello world and everything. So you can start writing your code instantly. Let's have a quick look then. So it's not using a lot of the power of that M1 chip as you can see. And then the same for memory. Hardly any is being used. It's nowhere near as thirsty as Android Studio or Xcode. It's using a tiny bit amount because at the end of the day, this is just a code ent entry um, software. So I'm really, really happy with that. So just to show you guys, Visual Studio Code does work. The client does open fine on this M1 Mac. Let's close that down. So oh, quit it properly. The last one is IntelliJ. And this is a great IDE if you are a developer. If you don't know much about IntelliJ, I'd definitely look it up on the internet, I'd look it up here on YouTube. It's a really, really good, powerful tool to use. So let's just start a new project. And uh, let's have it in Java. I'm gonna click next. No SD key specified, I'm just gonna continue on anyway. Uh, we'll create the project, command line app. Let's just do that. Yeah, we'll call it untitled. And there we go, we're loading up IntelliJ. It's just pulling all the bits and pieces in. And there we go, that's fantastic. It says JDK 1.6 is missing. Got some tips there, let's close those down. We can get that added on, that's no problem at all in that sense. But yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. There's plugins available to pull in. This is loaded up, no problems whatsoever again. So um, let's have a quick look again at resources. So it's using about a gig this time of RAM. That again is still not really overboard. Android Studio was definitely the one that was the most hungry out there. And then let's have a look at the CPU usage again. At idle, it's not really using much at all. So yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. That's really, really good to see. So there are four um, tools that a lot of you developers use out there. I know I've not covered every single tool. There's so many tools out there to cover. Um, so I couldn't do everything in one video, but there's four tools that a lot of people have been talking about and want to know if it works on the new M1 Mac. And as you can see, or well, as we can tell, it is all working absolutely fine. So let's just close that down. And yeah, that is really, really good news to hear that if you're gonna buy yourself an M1 Mac, that those four tools are working. So there we have it then. Those four tools open up absolutely fine. I think only the Android Studio had that little error there where it was talking about virtualization on an Intel chip, but the actual app worked okay. If anyone's got Android Studio and you do find problems there, do let me know if there's gonna be some interference and problems. I'd love to know that. Put them in the comments below. 
Well guys, like I said, I was just testing out four apps. Um, there are loads more developer apps out there. There's just too many to cover. So it was just testing out four of the major ones. But I've got a lot of confidence that the M1 Mac is brilliant for developers. Now, one thing I would add on, just a quick note, and that is, as you saw again with Android Studio mainly, um, just even an idle, just the app open, it ate up a fair bit of RAM. So I would suggest right now that if you're going to be a developer starting out right now and you're looking to buy yourself a brand new MacBook today or tomorrow in the next week or two, I would probably opt for 16 gigabytes RAM for you guys. Like I said, Android Studio and all these other apps, I'm not too sure yet if they've been optimized for the M1 processor and the RAM. They might be just using Rosetta 2 just to work, just to convert over to work. And that's why they're a little bit hungry and a little bit heavy on the RAM usage. But if you need to develop on a brand new machine today, I would say the M1 is absolutely more than capable of doing that for you. But like I said, I would definitely probably opt for 16 gigabytes of RAM. And again, it's your choice if you wanted a Mac Mini, a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. Really the amount of power, what is between the three, there's hardly anything in it. And do check out my other video actually where I do a comparison of eight gigabytes and 16 gigabytes in just standard processing power. You will see there is not much in it in just raw processing power. But when you're dumping things in the RAM, that does make a bit of a difference. Well guys, it is time to end this video. So if you have liked it, please do press the like button. And at the same time as well, if you want to hear the latest gaming news, tech news, reviews and comparisons, please do hit the subscribe button followed by the bell. Until next time guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.